Wonderful. So welcome everybody to the first of the Sticky Learning Lunches. Thanks very much for coming on. I'm gonna get myself so I can just share my video with you guys. Hello everybody. Let's stop sharing that screen. Let me says. Bear with me for two seconds. get that full screen so guys um, you can see me I would love to be able to see you as well so please go over to the right hand side where it says you can share webcam please do absolutely vital in this day and age right now in the current situation that we can see people that we can connect even by doing this via video link we still get the same or a certain level of those chemical reactions we get from actually seeing people face to face so i would love to see you guys in the webcams over here so please right hand side click on the share webcam so we can see who's on here and also see your smiling faces because that will help me in these trying times give people a couple more minutes to get on please make sure you've got a drink with you staying hydrated super important right just checking time 101 good a couple more people arriving This is a fairly new experience, especially to me doing this. I'm gonna move my chat box up to the other side so I can see what chats are coming in. If you have any questions, there will be a QA and a at the end, but please write them down, share them in the box, put them in the questions box so we can pick them up at the end. Good. 102 let's start with this so guys welcome to the first of the sticky learning lunches fantastic to be here fantastic to share with you guys especially in this day and age right now with our experiences we are making business matter mbm and we are the home of sticky learning and we're also the soft skills provider to the uk retail and grocery industry so excited for this opportunity to share this stuff with you guys and like i say it's vitally important that we do this that we get these moments to learn and we get these moments to expand our thinking while we've got time to while we're at home um, while we're working in these different dynamics and different environments super important so before i get into introductions about me i want to make sure we're setting you guys up for success so the first thing we're going to do get your phones if you're not watching this on your phone and you're watching this on your laptop Get your phones out let's make sure we're getting absolute attention on what we're doing first and foremost get your phones get them onto flight mode i'm just going to check make, make sure mine is on yeah flight mode we want to zero out those distractions and we're going to talk about that again a little bit later on in this session the next thing you want to do is if you've got your email open if you've got facebook open linkedin close them the moment you get a ping a beep a buzz your distraction your attention is going to go to there rather than actually learning anything here so we're going to do this for 30 to 40 minutes maximum. So I'm full attention to what we're doing here so that I can help give you some ideas that's going to push your thinking, that's going to help you get more focused on what you're doing and expand your capabilities to work even better in a home working environment, in these new environments that we find ourselves in. So kill the distractions before they kill you. Next thing you want to do, pens and paper. Let's make sure you've got a pad and some fresh paper available. You've got pens, paper, whatever it is you want to write with. Give yourself a nice blank sheet. You want to make sure you remove it from any of your other notes so it doesn't get lost in those, okay? That way, when you go back and read it, you can actually go back with it or you don't um, put it out and throw it away with the actions that you've already done. But you keep it there as a fresh reminder to keep this thinking fresh, up front, and moving forward. Good. That's a little bit of the housekeeping. Who am I? Well, my name's Nathan Simmons. I'm senior coach, senior leadership coach and trainer for MBM. Um, I've got over 20 years of leadership experience. Been working from home now on and off for quite some time. So I've got some um, already real life experience of doing this. 
we also opted to homeschool as well. So for you guys out there that have got your children at home at the moment, we've been doing that for a while as well. So I'm happy to take questions from that at a later date, just to help you move through that. Again, it's a new experience for a lot of you. Just want to say though, you're doing a great job and you're very capable of doing this, okay? So keep hold of that thought and keep doing what you're doing. Be curious and help those kids learn. And that's the best thing you can do for yourself and for them. What else? I also qualified as a leadership coach over almost eight years ago now. And I've been focusing on leadership development for the last nine. Absolutely vital that we learn these skills. Well, there's not many people out there teaching this stuff to us. And what I teach and how I teach is this uncommon skills taught in uncommon ways that are going to help you to be the best version of yourself. Okay. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to start breaking down a, a mnemonic, an, an acronym, for helping you to work better at home. And we're going to do that over the next two weeks. And we're going to do one session every day um, for the next working days over the next two weeks because you've got Easter right in the middle. So the first thing we're going to be talking about from the mindset model is to manage, to manage yourself. In this session, we're going to cover four key areas of things you can do to help manage your focus, help manage your time and help manage your action so you can get the best possible results and increase your productivity by maximizing your focus on that. So what's the first thing we want to cover in our manage model? The first thing we want to cover is our to-do list. Uh, sorry, apologies, it's the routine. Routine is absolutely vital. There's so many people at the moment, there's over 10,000 searches a month done on Google for time management. And there's a demand out there for people wanting to find out how they can manage their time better. But the truth is you can't actually manage your time because time's infinite. It's not something you can grab hold of and deal with. The only thing that you can actually manage is how you focus your attention inside that space to make sure you're getting the outcome that you want at the end of that space. So routine is absolutely vital. The first thing that we can do when we're dealing with our routine is we want to book three different times into our day. The first one of those times is our start time. We want to know when we're actually going to be doing our work because it's easy to get up in the morning and think, oh, I've got to work with this email. Oh, I've got to take this action. And the first thing that we do at 6.30, 7 o'clock, whatever time is, we jump straight into our social media or we jump straight into a work email and we don't actually structure out how we're going to get there. And next thing we know, it's already 10, 11 o'clock and we, and we found that those, those actions have run away with us. So the first thing we want to do is book a start time. That way we know when we're going to commence our day. And we've got time before that to prepare ourselves mentally for the day ahead. Breakfast, time with family, clearing your head, whether you do meditation or journaling in the morning or exercise. Making sure you're creating a window for those things before you actually go into your work workspace office. The second space, the second time we want to book is our lunch time. It's absolutely critical that we stop and that we make sure that we're energizing ourselves physically, but also mentally taking ourselves out of whatever work we were doing, wherever we were working, and taking that time to have a break, digest, reflect, rehydrate, and then come back to that space ready to do even more work and more focus for that afternoon, rather than just going through and just knocking actions off that to do list. The third time, is when you're actually going to stop because it's easy and I've done this recently with some of our clients I've sent an email in the evening at 9 30 10 o'clock at night not expecting to get a response until the next morning and I get a response five minutes later why because they're sitting at home with their work phone or their laptop nearby because they haven't actually got the uh, the framework of what sort of day they want to be working so instead they just keep it on because they think they need to be on call constantly when they're working from home but actually it's super healthy to make sure you're stopping at a, a, a point in the day so you know when you're working too. Because we have Parkinson's law, and we may talk about that a little bit more in a second, but work will fill the time that's been allotted to it. So if you know and say you're gonna work from nine until half five, you will make sure that work is done in that time space, rather than from maybe when I wake up to maybe when I go to sleep, you will then take longer to do those actions. You'll stretch it out even longer. You won't feel the urgency to get that thing done because you haven't put a bookend on that space you're working into. So the first thing is making sure that we've got the three times. 
The second thing that we want to do when it comes to uh, routine is managing our breaks. And this is super important, having regular breaks. You may have found out already from working at home, if you're not used to this, that actually you're finding you're more tired than you were previously in the evenings. You may find that you're getting more tired during the day because you're spending more time staring at your laptop, which may be a smaller screen than you're used to, or in an uncomfortable position, which is causing you to hunch up and is actually really not good for your thinking uh, physically or mentally. These regular breaks are absolutely vital, again, to get that focus. A couple of things that we can do here to make this work. One, you can use a Pomodoro timer. Okay, for maximizing that attention and focus. I've set it to 20, 25 minutes to make sure you're getting up, moving, stretching while you're doing the work. And that way you can just recalibrate the thinking and then go back in. Alternatively, just making sure that you're getting up every hour, going outside and getting some fresh air. This is also you know, critical. If we suddenly confine ourselves, oh, I've got to be at my desk, oh, I've got to be at my laptop all the time, I've got to be on call all the time. Actually, you don't have to be those things all the time. Unless you're working in the emergency services right now, you do not have to do that. Okay, you can get up, and go outside, get that fresh air just to help clear the thinking. Now, oxygen is one of the vital things that your brain is required to use uh, to make sure it's working uh, effectively. This is gonna help you as well get through your day so that when you get to the end of it, you will know what you're doing. You will know what the, um, the markers are. It's also important that we're also taking the third point of our routine, which is family, the family's routine. If you haven't been at home before in this environment with your children, you will know right now that the routine of your children is also critical to the success of your, of the, of your family while you're working at home. Because if they've been going to school, they will have a very set routine. And a lot of you are doing splendidly at making, making sure you're maintaining that routine all the way through so that when they return back to school, it won't be such a bump for them um, as if there wasn't that routine. So this is, this is absolutely um, an absolute necessity in this moment as well. But also the routine of you being home with them. Now, if you've got younger children, my daughter is seven, they may see you being at home in this environment with this regularity as um, something something novel and exciting. So you may be sat in whatever you call your office right now, um, locked away doing your work, and then all of a sudden there's a, a little tap at the door. Or you're in the middle of a meeting and there's this tiny voice, Dada, Mama. And you're thinking, I'm in the middle of a meeting. I can't, not, not now, not now. This is, I'm, I'm in a meeting with you know, the senior president of some company in Korea. This is not helping, helping me right now. When we give these guys routine as well, and they know when your breaks are, and they know when your lunch is, you can close the door and everyone has a plan of what's happening. Your significant other half can then support you in the work that you're doing because they know and they can tell the children, the family members, well, that is gonna be down at lunchtime at this time, mum is gonna be available here, and then we can work to that as well. And this gives them a space to work to, and that regularity, they know how to, to manage their own expectations. So this again is super useful. So headlines for our routine. We book three key times to make sure we stop, break or lunch and stop. We make regular breaks through the day and also we have a family routine incorporated in that as well. This is the first stage for helping us manage ourselves better. Number two is the to-dos. I'm hoping right now. How many people here are using a really clear to-do list? You put a yes in the comments or show a hand, whatever it is that's gonna work for you guys. How many of you guys are actually using a really clear to-do list right now? I'm not sure if there's gonna be a delay for me seeing messages. Sarah, who's supporting me on this, if you can see these coming through, please let me know.
I would hope that you are. Many people see there's a couple of camps with this. Some people say, I can just do this from memory. Or, yeah, I can write these down, I'm, I'm good. And then there's a, there's a third one of, yeah, kind of. So it's, we need to be making sure that we're doing this. And there's a couple of techniques because, great, everyone's saying yes, it's fantastic. I thought I was for a long, long time. And what I would find is I'd actually find that I'd have lists all over the place. And then I'll kind of have to calibrate those lists at the end of the week. It's like, oh, I didn't put that in the right book. Bring together, okay, tick, tick, tick. Okay, let's make a new list. Got, okay, get rid of those ones. And then at the end of the day, it's not useful. But making sure when we're doing, doing these to-do lists, we use a couple of techniques to really focus that, um, that intention into how we're making the best out of our days. Because if we don't do that, it's very easy to, we can put all these things on the list and it's very easy that when we look at that list and we go, oh, what's quick, fun and easy? So we sit down at our desk and go, what are the easy wins? Okay, I'm gonna grab that, I'm gonna grab that, I'm gonna grab that. And then you start getting into it. And then all of a sudden, again, your days run on and you've got into a serious problem in one of these things that were quick, fun and easy. And then you've completely ignored the rest of the stuff that was on your to-do list. Who here has experienced this? I, mean, I thought that was a good idea to do that. Uh, and actually now it's home time and I've got nothing done that I wanted to achieve. I think that's a vital lesson, kind of almost school of hard knocks we go through sometimes when we're almost looking busy for the sake of looking busy. Just gonna check time, good. So the thing is we wanna make sure we're looking at the things that are quick, fun and easy and knowing what they are before we get into them and not getting too distracted with them. A couple of techniques we can do to actually make this work. One is, bullet journaling. So I'm not gonna go into the full details of how this works. I'm just gonna give you a couple of key ideas that's gonna help you to focus your thinking in this. Bullet journaling is a really easy technique for creating a to-do list and structuring out what's going on in your day. And you can do this for the week, the quarter, the half year, and for the year. When we do our to-do list, the first thing that we wanna write down in, in the, is our to-dos and our events. And how we do that, we use two symbols. A single dot is, a, is an action. A circle is an event, an appointment, uh, a, a conversation that you're due to have. That way you're starting to create visual representations of things that you need to do on there. The next thing I'm gonna suggest that you put in there as well is your asterisk for your top three things you need to get done. So if you've, you've all said that you're using to-do lists right now, I want you to get your to-do list out right now and have a look at that. And then we're gonna ratify it against these first two elements. What are the things that were quick, fun and easy? And have you dived straight into those immediately just to get some of those things cleared off? So we do it to make ourselves feel better. And then the second thing is having a look there what your top three actions are that you need to be getting done today. Or if you've got your to-do list for tomorrow or the week, what are the top three things that need to happen right now on that list? And get an asterisk next to them so you've got that attention into it. And you just let me know when that's done. Just to make sure we're starting to bring this to life a little bit for you guys. Number three on the to do's. Is to don'ts. What do we mean by to don'ts? Everybody has a to-do list. You have your actions that you need to complete on a daily basis. It's also vital you understand what your don'ts are as well. What I don't do, what I stop doing, what I turn off. Because it's super easy when we're sitting at our laptop and maybe Facebook is on in the side, maybe WhatsApp's on on the phone, maybe LinkedIn's there and I'm doing some work and all of a sudden that ping does come in, that distraction does turn up. And as a result of that, I end up getting into something else or a, a dialogue or a, a social feed for 10, 15, 30 minutes. I don't even realize where the time's gone. 
So it's also writing out what your top three don'ts are. And you know what? This may be different for all of you. So right now, an immediate action for you guys is I want you in the next 37 seconds to write down the top three things that you need to stop doing to maximize your self-management and uh, your, your attention and your focus. And you can share those in the, in the comments as well, because you know what? Some of the things that you write down may well be some of the other things that other people are actually in denial about, okay? So share those in the comments as well. What are the top three things that you need to stop doing or don't do to maximize your, your outcomes? Sarah, feel free if you want to vocalize any of those that are coming through or share them with me on the comments so we can talk about them a little. Okay, a couple of people have come through. Uh, Joe Mears has said LinkedIn. Yeah, it's a big one. David right. Bowerman has said TikTok. Tick I haven't got into TikTok, but apparently TikTok is a social platform that turns everybody into a backing singer. Um, is there a, a career path change here potentially going on? What else have we got on there? Uh, Joe Mears has also said email pop-ups and friends WhatsApp group. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're going to talk about a little bit more about these distractions, but these don't list, this, this to don't list is absolutely critical. The world's most successful people have their to-do list and they have a to don't list as well. So it's important that we understand that what we say no to, or what's the impact of saying no to these things? Now, if there's things that you're meant to be doing, like time with family or having this routine or a project you're focusing on or a meeting you need to be at, if you're saying no to the preparation to do those things, if you're saying no to the time with family, what are you actually saying yes to? And what's the impact of doing that? And what's the impact of being distracted in those, those momentary blips? How much time is it actually costing you in productivity? More so for yourself as well, because it's Often what happens is we catch ourselves in those social feeds, we catch ourselves in those, and, and then we give ourselves a hard time for 30 seconds and switch everything off and go back to the work again. So it's critical we understand. Are we going for the stuff that's quick, fun, and easy? How are we actually strategizing what we're doing? And when we do these things, when we've done the action, that dot becomes a tick, and that circle gets a tick in it as well. And understanding what your two don'ts are as well. Good. Number three, third thing that we need to be doing. I couldn't do this, I couldn't draw a proper picture of it, but we're going to just tell you what it is. It's called eating the frog. Bonus points if you're watching this um, to tell me what the world's largest frog is, because I've been doing some environmental studies with my daughter. I was quite astounded by this. So please feel free while we're doing this to put this in the comments. What is the world's largest frog without Googling it? What do we mean by eating the frog? Brian Tracy, time management expert, millions of copies sold, multiple language translations. His phrase was about eating the frog. Why? Because I can't think of anything. Actually, there's a couple of things I can think of more repulsive than trying to eat a frog, maybe a slug, but it doesn't have the same ring to it. Do the difficult thing first. And this is the idea is when you've got your to do list, what are the actions? What are the events? What are the top three things I need to work on? What is the most difficult? What's the thing I'm ignoring? Because the thing that you're resisting is the thing that you're meant to be doing. The task you're avoiding is the task that you need to complete. The other one, you know, they talk about, you know, what I resist persists. If you're constantly ignoring it and filling it with quick, fun and easy, that thing is always going to be holding you back. And actually the quick, fun and easy won't be that fun because you know you would have been ignoring the priority items that were sitting behind you. So always do your difficult thing first. Do your list for tomorrow tonight and make sure you've got that thing at the top. Easy way to do this is mark it in green because that's the normal color of frogs. So when we've got the difficult thing, we've got our to-do list, we've got our top three, 
let's ring it in green, get a green pen, a green highlight or whatever it is, and ring it because you know that's the thing that you need to focus on. And psychologically, green is a color that means go, it means going forward. So that when we see that, we know that's number one on the priority. And then we can put our attention into doing it. What's the reason I asked what the world's biggest frog is? Did anyone, Sarah, just as a bonus point, did anyone actually get the world's largest frog? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Okay, it's called the Goliath toad or Goliath frog. And it weighs in at a whopping 3.3 kilos. Um, and it's about the size of a small cat. And when you hold it up like that, it's about four and a half foot long. It's huge. Now, the reason I'm sharing this is because sometimes when we make this thing, or the thing that we think is difficult, we make it bigger in our own head than it actually is. We make it more complicated. We turn the molehill into the mountain and then we start to avoid it. But the thing that makes eating the frog easy, they talk about, you know, if you're going to eat an elephant, you cut it up into small pieces. I don't suggest eating elephants. So what we do is we want to cut it up into bite-sized chunks. You are not going to eat three and a half kilos of frog in one mouthful, okay? You need to cut it up into smaller pieces. And by doing that, you can start to reduce it down to its lowest denominator. What's the one smallest action I can take here to create the biggest possible impact? What are the bite-sized chunks that are going to help me complete the frog? So rather than it being one task, actually maybe we break it down into five individual smaller tasks over the course of the week. That actually means by the end of Friday, we've completed what we said we would do on Monday. Rather than getting to Friday and saying, that was too much, I couldn't do it, it was overwhelming, and complaining about the overwhelm we're in. Critical that we do this as well. Get some clarity about your thinking. What are you putting all your energy into that's holding you back? What are you stopping yourself doing by making things more difficult in your own headspace? So eating the frog. If it's difficult and you're ignoring it, you need to do that first. Get a green ring around it. Make sure it's clear to you what it is you're working on and what the thing is you need to focus on. And then the third piece, if it's too big and it's too overwhelming and you're feeling that overwhelm, cut it up into bite-sized chunks. Break it down into tangible actions that you can take on a daily basis to make it happen. Number four, cabbage butterflies. Darren and I, Darren is the founder of MBM. Darren and I were talking about a story which he shared um, about how his father was uh, or is an avid vegetable grower. And when he was little, he used to go down the vegetable plot with his dad uh, and his dad would stand there grumbling about the butterflies leaping from cabbage to cabbage, eating the butterflies. And Darren's analogy to this, which I love, is, you know, if, if the butterfly didn't keep going from one cabbage to another, it would be absolutely huge because it would have eaten the whole cabbage. And often we work like the butterfly. We don't, you know, we're not complete finishers. We nibble a bit here, we go over here, we nibble a bit there, then we go over there, and, and then we come back over here maybe a couple of days, and then, we, and then we go through the cycle again, but we never get the sensation of completing anything because we're only ever taking the bite-sized chunks. Who here is guilty of this? I'd love to see some yeses, some hands up for this. Keep me posted what's coming through, Sarah. Who's guilty of having things on their to-do list and only doing a bit of it and then getting distracted back in your, your, your distractions, your don'ts? Or actually being even more, even still being fatigued before you even get to the end of the day to actually finish because your brain's not firing in the right possible way. Now, here's the interesting thing. The butterfly isn't the problem. The problem is, is what the butterfly actually leaves behind before it goes to the next cabbage. So when Darren and I were talking about this, is all the while that his dad was focusing on the butterflies, which are truly the distractions that we had. If he'd been looking at the cabbages, he would have seen that the butterfly was laying eggs on the cabbage which was then turning into caterpillars, which were eating his cabbages. All the time he spent looking at the butterflies, he was never paying attention to the real thing that needed to be looked after, which was the actual uh, the crops he was growing and wanted to, to, to collect at the end of the harvest. 
what happens is that we see these shiny new objects. Oh, there's another project. Oh, there's another email. Oh, that's really interesting. Oh, that person. Da -da. And we just get caught up. And that's why I talk about turning the phone off again, those don'ts. We have to focus on the elements we need to complete in that moment and be aware what the shiny distractions are. Social media is designed to be social. It's designed to keep you in there. The algorithms are designed in such a way that you'll spend more time in there. You know, when you put messages up and it says typing, most of the time no one is typing. They're just doing that to keep you interested to see what's actually gonna come up after that. So when we start to realize actually what the critical things are, the cabbages, and what are the butterflies, we can make it, we can discern, we can make a discerned um, decision about the thing we want to focus on. And actually, if you want to look at butterflies, that's what you've got breaks for. That's when you know when your, your shift, you know, your, your time at work has stopped and you can go and spend time looking at that butterfly. That's okay. Sometimes there's new ideas and there's um, new concepts that come out of that distraction. It is good at the right time. So it is about focusing on the butterfly, um, on the cabbages, not the butterflies. Some of the key things I wrote down here. Bullet journaling part two. When you've done your to-do list and you get to the end of the day, it, you need to review that to make sure, have I done good work? Have I made progress on the elements I was looking at today? The first thing is we can tick those things off that we have done. And that's absolutely the right thing to do. It feels good. That's why to-do lists are addictive. Actually, when you tick them off, you get a little hit of dopamine, um, the, the um, chemical of addictions. We often get this when we drink or we smoke or we gamble. All those things causes a dopamine hit. How many people here, and this is the running joke with this, how many people have got a to-do list and they're ticking things off and then they've done something they haven't got on the to-do list and they write it on there just so they can cross it off? How many people have done that? I bet everyone on this current conversation says yes, but no, I have, and I still do it, even though I know why I'm doing it. The first thing we want to do is tick the stuff off. Tick. The second thing that we want to do is if we haven't done it and we know it's critical for the next day, we just turn our dot into an arrow. So anything that we put a dot, any action up there, if we haven't done it, where it was a dot, it now becomes an arrow, and you make sure it goes on tomorrow's to-do list when you're, work, when you're doing your, your reconciliation process at the end of the day. That way you're never losing actions. That way you don't end up like me five years ago with three different lists written on the back of an envelope, back of a notepad, front of a notepad, wherever it's consolidated and focused. Constantly calibrating, constantly reconciled to make sure you're getting the best possible outcome. Second thing I wrote down here, Headphones. Couple of, I'm gonna add a couple of things into this. One, headphones, earbuds, over the ear, whatever it is to block out the noise. If you've got sound canceling headphones, they are phenomenal, okay? I've got my earbuds for my laptop, I've got overhead just in case. And what I'm doing is I'm just running different sounds in there. Now, depending, no, I can't have music on because I find music is too distracting. It draws me in and I start singing along or humming along or whatever. I, I can't keep track of what I'm doing. So I have to have nature sounds. I know this sounds ridiculous to some people. You know, I have the sounds of birds singing, yeah, or in, or, and, a, and a sound of a string. I'll happily share the link for this later. And the sound of a string, like it's forest noises for eight hours in my headphones. So it helps to cancel out the background noise. Why? Because my daughter is downstairs doing a Joe Wicks workout or an Oti Mabuse dance class. And I've got Mary Poppins um, or George Ezra playing in the background, distracting me from what I'm doing. Or I've got John next door, loving to bits. He's at home, he's a builder. He's at home because he's uh, not able to work, but he's rebuilding his kitchen. So. 40 minutes ago I had to ask him to stop sanding the floor so I could do this recording with you. There's a lot of noises going on here. Children coming in and um, you know, your partner doing whatever. It's easy to get distracted in it. So we put the headphones on, cancel out the background noise and just get calming sounds in there. I also use binaural beats. Some people know about binaural beats. Please let's have a count up and see who uses binaural beats. So yes, if you're using binaural beats for concentration, or meditation. I'd love to see what the uh, the count count is.
on your beats are phenomenal. Again, they just help to cancel out the background noise, help to keep you calm, help to keep you thinking, help to keep you focused. So we've got nature noises and bon your bees just to help with that. The second one, again, or well, sorry, the third one is again, family. Coming back to this point here, you having this routine, making sure that you've got a closed off space to zero out the distraction. Making sure that you've got, you know, your, your daughters or children aren't constantly coming in to make that distraction with you. Make sure you've got a closed space. You can close the door, headphones on, working with your routine. So what are we covered? Four key elements from the managing yourself. First one is routine. Booking in three times, making sure you've got breaks and making sure you've got a family routine as well. Number two, to-dos. Are you just doing the stuff that's quick, fun and easy? Bullet journaling. Making sure you've got your actions and events in. Making sure you know what your don'ts are as well. Number three is eating the frog. Making sure you're doing the difficult thing first circling it in green so you know it's there for your attention and if it's too big cut it up into bite-sized chunks number four closing off your day with your bullet, bullet journaling with ticks and your arrows use headphones and also making sure your family knows where you are close the door do your work and move on guys that was that was the key elements of the manage from the, the, the m from mindset what questions have you got i'm aware that we're kind of we're cutting close to the time what questions have you got right now that you need to ask me to help you manage yourself and manage your time better. Please fire them in. Sarah, when are they come in, just happily shout them out and then we will go through those. Nothing coming in at the moment. Guys, bring the questions. Also, at the same time, let me know what's been useful out of this training session. What are the top takeaways you're taking away from this session? What have you written down that is, is useful for you right now? George Pickering has said, eat the frog. Eat the frog, definitely. Definitely. George, what is your frog if you're happy to share? What is your current frog that you need to eat? George has said finishing a newsletter. Yeah. How long will it take you, George? Honestly, if you gave your absolute 100% focus to that newsletter, how long would it actually take you to finish it, start to finish? Eight hours. Eight hours. How can you break that down into manageable chunks so that you can have that completed in the next 48 hours? George has wrote, get, got a webinar tomorrow, but can do by the end of the week. Absolutely. So what gets scheduled gets done. Making sure you're taking those chunks of time at whatever the best time is your brain's working. It might be morning, it might be afternoon. Book that into your calendar between here and there. And also add, or two ways to do it. You either add 10% of extra time to the time slots that you're allotting for it. So rather than an hour, you add an hour and 10 minutes. So you've got a little bit of room to play with. Or you make sure that your finish point is Thursday, not Friday. So that you work to Thursday, and if there's anything you need to tweak and adjust, you've got Friday to make the tweaks and adjust, not to complete it. And then actually you run out of time. What else has been useful for you guys? Joe Mears has said building a better to-do list, categorising and turning off distractions. Absolutely. It's super easy to get distracted in these things, Joe. Do your to-do list, make sure that you're reconciling it tonight, what you need to do tomorrow, that way you haven't got to waste time getting into the day. You can get into the day, look at it, go. As a result of doing that, you know what your top three things are, you know what your frog is, and you can get those things done so it's actually easy to go and do the quick fun and easy things and they become quick fun and easy good joke one more what else is being say that again there's nothing else come through okay 
Guys, I hope this has been useful. If you have more questions, please, you just email them in to us. We'll pick those up and we will help you. I want to let you know that tomorrow there is another training. We're going to do another Sticky Learning Lunch tomorrow at one o'clock. We're going to keep doing this as, these, as long as you need us to. As long as we're at home, we will keep doing this content to keep building you guys up. A couple of things that are going to happen. One, you're going to get an email about today. I would love to get your feedback about how I presented, the content that I presented um, in this space. I want your feedback. I want to know how it's helping you. I want to know what you've taken away from it and what you're doing to, to, to move forward. And also what you're going to share out of this. What one thing here would you share with one of your colleagues to help them improve the way that they're focusing? You're going to get an email that's going to ask those questions. I would love to hear that. The second thing is, We've also released a coaching card deck as well. It's a new deck of coaching cards with some of the great questions that I ask people to help them shift their thinking. And you can pick this up from the website as well. We're going to be sending you a link for this. If this is useful for you as a leader, please click on the link, go and have a look and see how it's going to help you to get better results and help you impact the people you work with and the, and the work that you're doing. Let me know what you think of those. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow in the next section when we're going to be looking at the I from the mindset model which is about isolation, something that we're all feeling a lot of right now in different ways, shapes and forms. And I'm going to share some of the personal experiences from a mental health first aider point of view, from a leadership coach point of view, and from someone in the midst of it with the rest of you guys as well. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks very much for your time. Have a wonderful rest of your day.